It's been over 90 years since Hertha Berlin has won the Bundesliga title. Just now, this team has fought off relegation in the last split second. As we can see here in the Bundesliga, they came in 16th place and had to play against Hamburg. Hamburg was fighting for promotion into the Bundesliga, while Hertha was fighting against relegation into the second division. It was a battle. The first game was actually won by Hamburg. It was looking like the giants of previous years are coming back. But then Hertha came back and beat them 2-0 at Hamburg's home ground, which must have been devastating for their fans. So going back to Hertha BSC, this is a team coming out of the capital of Germany. Normally clubs that are out of the capitals of their countries are actually doing well, are actually supposed to be like historically strong, but it's 90 years, 90 years since this club has won the Bundesliga title. I am here to change that and I want to make Hertha the European Giants. All right, let's do that and let's bring in some iconic players. Let's turn some players into some world, world-class talents. I have to admit, when I saw that Hertha was struggling as much as they did this season, especially being from Germany, I was a bit surprised because I always felt like Hertha was that team that never really necessarily should have been down there. But at the same time, looking into the squad right now, I do see a couple of issues and I'm ready to, to try and fix them, of course. But generally speaking, it's not a bad squad. There are some really, really good players in there including some talented-ish players. Players like Niklas Stark used to be a bit talented and were projected to be some of the bigger centre-backs playing a bigger role and even going into like the German national team and all that good stuff. But yeah, things haven't really worked out there. So I really do wonder where things are going to go for Berlin in the upcoming years. But for me now, it's all about creating a fun team, a team that can compete within the first season to try and get into the top let's say top 12 i'd be very satisfied with that but saying that the squad itself has around whoa 71 million why do i have 70 million? what surely not hold on i'm gonna save and back out and see if that's actually the right amount they actually have that what okay I guess I'll take it. Without even selling anyone, I've just spent the entire budget. I've gone for Galeno, who has been basically a bench player for Porto. I thought maybe after Luis Diaz left, he would have a bit of a bigger role in that squad. I've been watching a bunch of Porto games because I have Vitinha on Sorer, but Galeno himself has been coming off the bench. So I felt like, you know what? Let's give this guy a starting lineup spot. I think I believe he played for a different Portuguese club before that as well. Then we have gone for Christensen, who is at Salzburg. Salzburg just recently sold Brendan Aronson to Leeds United. Big transfer. Jesse Marsh, the American coach, is getting his American talent. I wonder what's going to happen over there. Do you guys think that Jesse Marsh could do well at Leeds United next season as well? Obviously, this season, he prevented them from going down. I personally really like the guy. I like his interviews, and it's, it's, it's a breath of fresh air in the Premier League. I really enjoy him. Let me know what you guys think about him. And then I've gone for Kalajic. Now, this one, a lot of people don't know outside of Germany. Many people don't know this guy, but he's extremely talented. He's very good at what he does. And even clubs like Bayern Munich are looking at him as a possible replacement of Lewandowski if Lewandowski goes to Barcelona. That whole saga is a completely different story we need to talk about. But Kalajic now is a part of Hertha. So he goes up top. Then we have Galeno on the left and we do have Christensen in the right back spot. This is the lineup we're going for for this season. And yes, Kevin Prince Boateng is my captain at the age of 34. What? Got something to say or something? Tell it to Kevin Prince. I'm sure you won't say it to his face. I'm terribly sorry for missing this, but we do have a youth academy talent in here in the name of Rafael Martin. We're going to bring him in center forward slash striker. I feel like he could possibly be better on the wings because he has great pace on him, which kind of makes the purchase of Galeno kind of pointless. But at the same time, hey, you got to work hard to be involved in this team. But I could also just pop him into center attack in mid. Uh, I mean, do I? Kevin Prince plays for one season and then Martin comes in and takes over. 
Yeah, let's do that. I like that. Season's over and the boys have performed to the expected levels. Now, goal difference wise, we're not looking good. Minus 12. Obviously can't be too happy with that, but we have beaten Hata in real life, right? That team struggled, came in 16th, had to play playoffs against relegation. Now we are here and we have gotten ourselves into the 10th spot, which is ideally where you think you should normally see Hata at, or at least like I would say like 14th to 10th. That's normally technically at this point in time where you normally should be seeing Hata. But right now we have put them into the 10th position. I don't know what the budget is going to be next season. I assume it's not going to be more than what we had last year because that would be ridiculous. 71 million. I don't know where EA got this number from. I never knew that Hata had this much money, but they had it. 44 points. Now, the boys though, if we look at it, Kalajic up to an 80 rating. Martin, the center attacking midfield talent from the youth academy, has come in and taken over now. Galeno on an 81. Serdar looking very good. Tussar looking solid. Rishta has gone up nicely and he's only 24 years old. Christensen with a plus three. Niklas Stark and Kempf improving. Plattenhardt, he's old. He's 30 years old now. That's definitely one position that we're going to go ahead and change. Shvolov is 29 years old. Probably need to bring in a new goalkeeper there. So goalkeeper and left back are the positions that I'm currently looking at for the next season in terms of purchases. But one thing I can say is... We haven't really sold anyone this year, which normally we do, but this rebuild, because we had so much cash, I had no need to. So next season, if the budget isn't as large as I would like it to be, we can use that to our advantage, sell a bunch of players and do well. Now, the boys, Rista, 11 and 2, Alajic, 10 and 5, Darida, 7 and 8, coming in, has taken some uh, game time away from others, it seems, and Serdar with the 7 and 1. Not necessarily an incredible season, for any individual in our club. Well, lads, the budget is pretty much the same. It's 71 million again. Hey, you know what? This might be the first rebuild where I actually complain about having too much money. But to be fair, it is kind of nice. So the two signings I promised are made. We have brought in Caio Enrique. He is the left back for AS Monaco. I don't know if I used him in a different video. If I did, I already forgot. But Caio Henrique is a left back that I haven't necessarily given too much time in terms of my content. So I'm excited to have him here. 80 rated at this stage. And I've also brought in Rajkovic, who had a decent season in Ligue 1. And I wanted to have him as the main man. He's 26 years old. This is not necessarily a young talent or anything. But for a goalkeeper, he probably has at least like six more good years in him. And since we do have this much money at Hata, I don't know if this rebuild is going to take eight years to get to all the trophies that I want to get to. We can easily finish like sixth this season. We'll see how things go. But that defensive back line, as things stand, will remain the same way because I basically spent all my money. But... I do want to sell a bunch of players because as you can see right here, we have a few too many players in the club and that is basically cash that we're not using. Well, I did have a big chunk of money and I did decide to use it. So I have gone ahead and sold a bunch of players. Yes, we were back up to around 70 million. I didn't necessarily go out and buy the best players or the best, right? I didn't go for the big names yet because we only came 10th place. I can't be going out and buying the most ridiculous players. But I have gone for Demiral, who is just like plus two above the center backs we had already. And I've also brought in Ibanez, or Ibanez, that's probably how you pronounce his name, from AS Roma. Now, AS Roma, as you guys might know, are the first Conference League title winners. They have won it against Feyenoord in the final. And of course, who coached them? The man that held up his hand and said exactly this, five, Mourinho. He has done it again. Five European finals, and I believe he won all five of them. The guy is just ridiculous. I like Mourinho a lot in terms of like his character and things, because these days I feel like too many football players and coaches are just too robotic. Like they, they just don't show any personality. So when a coach actually comes out and has like an interview where he doesn't give this robotic answer every single time that's just boring and we all already know that he's going to answer that it just stands out so much so i love to see these types of characters like i believe yesterday it came out that for example ibrahimovic was playing months on months with no acl how crazy is that he said he wanted to lead ac milan to the title and he did Obviously, didn't play every single game, but did his best for the club and motivated everyone around the club. And, you know, 
led by example by i'm assuming by just fighting constantly to be able to play i mean imagine playing football with no acl in your body it's just crazy so they're gonna go ahead and um you know give him surgery he's probably gonna be out for like six to eight months apparently it's just madness out there but i respect those types of people that are out of the norm so shout out to Mourinho, shout out to as roma and shout out to Zlatan. The season is over, my friends. We have two wins to finish it off. And Hertha come in sixth. There we go. And as the season began, I forgot to mention a few things to you because some players have come back on loan uh, from loan and are now part of the starting lineup. For example, Maya. Getting into that sixth position, Conference League football, I'm excited about it. But Maya came back from loan and he is now a big part of our team. He is only 24 years old, plays centre midfield alongside Serdar here. And Aska Sibara, I believe, has been taking a lot of playtime away from Martin. The uh, young talent from the Youth Academy has barely had any game time, despite being the only centre attacking midfielder in his team, apart from the likes of Boateng, who is now 66 rated. But somehow, that young man in that camp position just didn't get any playtime in the beginning of the season. Now, at this stage, he might have had a bit more. Where is he? No, 14 games. I don't know why the game doesn't play him. It's a weird one for me. But nonetheless, if we look at goals, Karajic this time around has stepped it up big time. He's up to an 84 rating. That's a plus four just this year. Rista again with a great season, but seems like... His uh, potential has not been impacted positively last year. Galeno with the 11 and 7. That makes me very happy. And Maolida as a substitute in 21 games. Six goals and four assists. That's not too shabby. But generally speaking, get into that sixth position. I like that a lot. Now, I feel like when we look at the team right now, I might just cash in on Martin next season and bring in an actual real life player into that center attack in midfield spot because he's been ruined by the game itself, which really sucks. Uh, and then I'm probably going to go ahead and bring in a new right midfielder as well, which both of them will cost a lot of money. So let's see if we get around the 77 million mark again. And also, apart from Maya, another player that came back was Aldarete or Alderete, sorry. And this guy looks very good. He's only 26 years old, an amazing backup to have, and basically on the same level as Demiral. So we have some competition there. Now that I'm in the new season, I had to move forward one day because at the end of the last season, I still had like 20 million to spend. So I used the Youth Academy talent plus the 20 million to bring in Plojek. This man is basically confirmed to join Bayer Leverkusen now. I think he's possibly coming in as a replacement for Florian Wirtz at first because Wirtz is one of the biggest talents in world football right now, but sadly had a massive injury and he's probably going to be out up until New Year, possibly. So he can play center attack in midfield, but he can also play striker. So could be a backup to the likes of Patrick Schick as well. I can also see him play down the wings. So basically an offensive all-rounder in the name of Flojek, which I'm very excited about seeing him in the Bundesliga. I can't wait to see it happen. But he is now a part of the Hertha squad. 81 pace, 79 shooting as he comes in with great amounts of dribbling on him. Six foot two tall, so quite the physical specimen as well. I'm very excited to see him in the Bundesliga and see what he can do. But at the same time, I can't wait to see what he does for this team. Now, this season's budget is 109 million. Well, that's a lot of money. What the hell do I do with that one? Oh, right midfield. Yeah, right midfield. For that right midfield spot, it's not necessarily a huge signing I've made. I stayed within the constraints of Hertha. I didn't want to go too big. So I've gone for Gonzalo Plata, a right midfielder, 89 pace, and he is from Ecuador. So this one has me excited. Four-star skill moves on the left with high-low work rates. Could be cutting inside and scoring some really nice goals for ourselves. But generally speaking, I really like the look of this team. I really do. It's a bunch of mixed players led by the man that has done really well and a man that is wanted by a bunch of clubs and a new transfer now into the Bundesliga in real life. So yeah, the bench, by the way, is a beast. Like this Hertha team is actually quite good right now, but no titles yet. This season sadly ends in tears. Now, I wasn't aware that we actually qualified for Europa League, but we did. I'm, I'm constantly getting that wrong, you know, like the whole which position do you qualify for Europa League? Which position do you qualify for Conference League stuff? I'm still getting to grips with it because it's obviously the first season of that uh, competition being involved. 
But in the cup, in the semi-final, we lost against Gladbach. In the quarterfinals, we lost against Manchester United in the Europa League. But in the league, my friends, we are fifth. So we have moved up one spot in this season. I, I gotta say, it is a bit disappointing. I thought we would be doing a little bit better, but it makes me happy to see that we're not too far off top four. Top four definitely has to happen next season. I think top three is actually reasonable because we have so much money that I still haven't spent in this season as well. And I feel like there's a couple of changes that we can definitely bring in to improve this team even more. I gotta sadly get rid of Ibanez because he has been injured the entire year, which basically ruined his potential completely. So maybe we just go all out on a big name center back at this point. That could be something we can do. But generally speaking, the amount of money we have makes it quite easy to replace some of these players right here, especially if we involve them into the deal. So that's a good thing. But I love the fact that Kalajic is up to an 87. Kyle Henrique and Christensen, both fullbacks up to an 86. Same as Galeno. So a bunch of these players are getting to those levels that I want them to be on. Now that's only a 20, 22 goal contribution season in 44 games. So basically every second game he has done something. But his average rating is a 7.1. So that's great. Plojek, great season for us. That's great. Galeno has done well once again. Rista has played a bunch of games by the looks of it. Maya has done well for himself. Where's Plata? How many games did Plata play? 37 games. Only five goal contributions. Buddy, you got to step it up, huh? That is not good enough. So now we had to move on from Ibanez to Bastoni. Yes, we have brought in another center back from the Serie A. Bastoni today, I've been hearing a bunch of rumors about him possibly getting a move as well. A bunch of clubs out there are very much interested in him. That would be quite nice to see. Uh, I think he's very talented, but I feel like he's going to stick around at Inter for one more season at least. I think he's still, you know, not there yet possibly, but great talent. Got to say it. And then, man, we, I don't know what it is, man. Renato Sanchez, it's such a shame. It's such a shame that this guy just can't be freaking consistent because there are moments when you watch him and you're like, wow you are unbelievable and then the next game you're like is he even on the pitch so Renato Sanchez is now a part of this team he has replaced Serdar in this squad um it isn't necessarily a massive upgrade or anything but it is a big name player and we wanted a couple of those in this team so now we have done it Let's see how it goes. It's upsetting to announce it, but once again, we have failed in the Europa League, my friends. We came down into the semi-finals and lost it against Chelsea twice. 3-2. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. Because we are Bundesliga champions. After 90 plus years, Hertha Berlin have done it again. They, have, they are lifting that trophy. Last time they did it, it was in like 1930. That is crazy how long ago that is. Back in the day, dude, I used to think like, oh my God, we're in the year like, I don't know, 2002. Now it's 2022. Time goes fast. Enjoy your life. Do everything you really want to go after. Follow your passion. As long as it's something that doesn't hinder anyone else or hurt anyone else, you know? But yeah. That's just short life uh, advice. Life advice by Johnny Sports. <laughs> Anyways, Hertha Berlin with the 81 points. Well done, lads. We have Kalajic, who is leading the line as the monster he is. I mean, the guy is six foot seven tall. What a beast. I can't wait to use him. Project, though. Hey, he overtook him. 90 rated at this point. Galeno got injured, but 88. Sanchez did well. Maya with a plus two. Both midfielders with a plus two. Plata has gone up to the 86. I believe that is his potential. Hopefully he can get past it now. Christensen 88. Demiral 85. Bastoni unreal 90. Caio Enrique with the 88. And our goalkeeper has gone up as well. So now that we have won the Bundesliga, we will be playing Champions League football. Kalajic with a 26 goal contribution season. I feel like there's going to be one season where he go he's going to score like... I don't know, 40, he's going to get like a 45 goal contribution season. That's just my gut feeling. Galeno, great season. Lojek as well. Plata had a much better season this time around. I love to see that. Maya with 15 assists. Congratulations, man. He's our captain right now. 
an original of the squad because obviously first season he was only loaned out but back into the squad right now love to see that but Demidal worrying me a little bit minus one on his form and generally not looking too good but still we have won the Bundesliga so taking him out of the team right now would be kind of disrespectful oh Hertha are you actually putting it off Berlin has done it Liverpool in the final. We are now on the next day, by the way. Good morning. <laughs> we are now here in the Champions League final. We have no cup final. That is a shame. Who has beaten us on our way to the cup final? Let's, let's just quickly take a look at it. Wait, were we kicked out that early? I'm already back to December. Who kicked us out the cup, man? Where is the cup loss? Dortmund. Okay, well, that makes sense. Now, Hertha against Liverpool in the final. I'm excited about that matchup. Bundesliga itself, we win it again. And this time with a 20-point gap. Bayern Munich only fifth. What the hell happened there? Bielefeld seventh. This league table is a weird one, man. It well and truly is. But Hertha is in first place. Only conceded 39 goals. Scored 80. Now, who has been the main man? Looking at the team... The lowest rated player is Demiral. The highest rated player in the squad right now is Klozek, which excites me. The new man for Bayer Leverkusen. And Klozek. Oh, 28 and 11. What a season. Galeno, 17 and 6. Kalajic, disappointment. I thought you would have that 140 plus goal contribution season, but he didn't. But I'm still extremely excited to use him in the gameplay because he's six foot seven. I can't wait to see how he plays. But generally speaking, we have trusted Demiral. He has given us uh, what we wanted from him. He has gone up Bastoni up to a 91, which is quite nice as well. And you can just tell this Hata team that we have put together has been a joy. And I'm excited to see them in this Champions League final now up against Liverpool. Hopefully everyone will be fit. We have like a two week break up until the Liverpool game, which is great. So every single player should be fit to play. And yes, they are. That is lovely to see. And even on the bench, we have some good options. Uh, we have the likes of Richter, who we obviously have been um, basically nurturing all the way through. He is great. Dil Rosun and all the other guys are great substitution op options as well. And uh, do I like Redan more than Piontek? I think I do. So Redan goes onto the bench. He has a little bit more pace. Five star, five star as well. Why not? But yeah, Kalajic and the boys have to step it up now against Liverpool. I hope we can pull this off. Liverpool itself is coming through with Fatsi. Goretzka at striker, sure, why not? Uh, uh, Mo Salah, Nkunku, Soler, Fabinho, Van Dijk, Romero, Alexander Arnold, Theo Hernandez, Alisson. Let me just go back in again and see if we can get an actual striker. Nope, we can get Dybala in there. What the hell is going on? Can I have an actual striker for them? Nope, now Jota plays center midfield. You know what, guys? I'm just going to move into gameplay. It's not my fault. EA has messed up this stuff. Just seeing that Fabrizio Romano has tweeted out that Divock Origi will be joining AC Milan on a free. I really hope he does well there. I hope Divock um, gets that starting line of playtime because obviously at AC Milan, you have the likes of Giroud. You have the likes of Zlatan. I don't actually know if Giroud has a contract past this season, but generally speaking, you have so many players over there that are aging combined with some others like the likes of Rafael Leao who had an unbelievable season um so yeah Divock Origi joining into that team would be quite interesting Klozek looking for the big man the big man looking for him again over the top that's what we do Alisson first big chance created by both the six foot two and above tall players Klozek and Kalajic I like that partnership already that's clearly mine no chance for Liverpool Renato Sanchez Bringing it over to Galeno. Gale Galeno. Galeno. What a strike in the Champions League final. Mate, I saw it. I was like, that's going to go to the outside and in. Let's take a look at this shot from one specific angle. Please show me the angle from behind him. That is exactly what I want to see right now. There we go. This is the one. Look at it. Oh, mate. That's stunning. That's absolutely stunning. Galeno, you might be on the bench at Porto. Right here, you have just become the main man. Renato. Logic. Renato. Kalajic. There's a runner. 
He's left-footed, isn't he? Alisson has to make a save there. Our right midfielder, Plata, cuts in as I expect him to do so. Now, six foot seven giant. Surely, surely no one ever... What? Fabinho wins the header battle against him. That's a joke. Let's try that again. Get inside, Kalajic. What are you doing? Kalajic. Kalajic, please. Thank you. He's inside now. There he is. He gets onto the header. It's just not accurate. I love that, Hlozek. Come on, Hlozek. Ah, oh, referee, come on. He didn't let me through, man. That was my chance right there. Give me, give me, the, give me the other camera. Galeno, can you take free kicks as well? Let's see. Oh, oh God. This is going to be terrible, isn't it? Yellow times. Ugh. That's a great ball down to Mo Salah. Mo Salah running down the wing. Well, that didn't work out, did it? Bastoni coming in with the tackle immediately. Bastoni seems quite massive as well. Without even wanting to, we have brought in a bunch of massive players into the team as Goretzka gets his chance to score. Liverpool in the 38th minute finally find their ability to take a shot. Plata now. Plata cuts inside on that left foot of his. Sees Kalajic. To the right we go. Kalajic make that move inside. There he is. Van Dijk with a bicycle kick clearance. That big man can jump. Thank you very much. Big interception. Moving it to Hlozek. Hlozek back to Renato. Renato looking for Kalajic. Kalajic cuts inside. Near post is open. It really isn't open when Alisson is goal. He's in goal. He's goal. What the hell? English. Kalajic. Big man. That's him. That's him. Sure. What? Uh, I need to use the downward headers. Christensen chasing it down. Down the wings. Liverpool now getting into the box. Good pass inside. Renato Sanchez gets it. Come on then. Move it. Let's get something out of this. We have some players still moving forward. It's Maya. Maya. Kalajic. Big man. Can you skill? Why not? Hit it on the volley. Uh, come on. Big steal. Absolutely love it. Hlozek sees his teammate make a beautiful run. Oh. Today is the day of stunning goals. Renato Sanchez. But I believe in in Portuguese, you don't necessarily say the R, right? It's like Renato. Is that not how you say it? At least that's like how Brazilians uh, pronounce their names. Like Royce Gracie is Royce Gracie type of thing. Jiu-Jitsu legend. Anyways, Renato Sanchez has done it, my friends. Unbelievable finish right there as Jurgen Klopp is very, very sad. I wonder if they're going to update his model to not have those glasses on anymore because Klopp hasn't had those glasses in a long time. The man has gone ahead and lasered his eyes and he's doing well. And his teeth are still as white as Firmino's. And here we go. Hold on a second. We might have yet another opportunity to smack it in. It's Kalajic. It's offside. It's offside. It surely is. Yep, it's offside. Man, Liverpool now is all over me. It's a bit too late, lads. You're 2-0 down. Should have done that after being 1-0 down. They're like everywhere. As soon as I get the ball, I can't find any options to pass it to. But now we might have a chance. Liverpool on the counter. They might be hit with the likes of Galeno. Galeno, the surprise star of this race right here. Oh, no. I wanted to bring it over to Kalajic. I kind of wanted to score with him today, but I haven't been able to do so. I feel like a failure. There's Kalajic now. He's going for it. Come on, Kalajic. Yes, lads. Keep going. Stop. Get through both of them. Nah, I want it. I have wanted too much. What am I doing, man? Skilling around with a six foot seven tall beast. He was fun to use, though. I got to say, even though I didn't score with him, he's a great different option to have. Normally, a lot of us, including myself, like to have those fast strikers that are a bit smaller, much better dribbling. But it is fun to use different types of players. And those different types of players are going to be lifting the Champions League trophy for Hertha BSC. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I had a great time here recording this. I feel like we have put together a very unique and good looking squad in terms of the different types of players we've had here with the wingers being the dribblers, the skillful players down the center with Hlozek and Kalajic, two giants, physical specimens. And at the back with the likes of Bastoni and others, 
I think we have put together a very, very nice lineup. Let me know which rebuild we should be doing in the comments down below, guys. I'll try my best to pick some of your guys' ideas in the comments. Have a good day. I'll catch you next time. Much love to you all. Obviously, can't respond to every single comment, but thank you so much if you do leave one down there. Have a good day. Take care and peace.